everyone welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video so today i'm going to be unboxing this sennelier aqua mini set as well as modifying it kind of to my needs a little bit so hopefully you find this interesting maybe a little bit helpful if you did definitely let me know but just to be clear this is not a sponsored video and i did buy all of this stuff with my own money and i'm just sharing it to share so yeah, let's get started. So the reason I wanted to go for this half pan set from Sennelier is because I've tried their two paint before and I really hated it only because it does not dry down in my half pans no matter what I do because of the climate that I live in. It stays like sticky and taggy just like the first day it was poured out of the tube and I found out I actually really hate that. So I was looking into trying out the brand again and getting like a nice little limited palette set because that's just something I've been really into recently and I saw a bunch of reviews for this aqua mini set the set is like insanely cheap if you ask me like eight professional artist grade watercolors for about 20 us dollars like that's actually a steal of a deal so it's like I definitely kind of want to get this but the reviews were mixed it seemed like two of the biggest issues that people had were that the color range wasn't the best and that these the like palette that they give you like the little tin and the little tray that it sits in is kind of cheap and not that great so I had an idea while I was watching these videos reviewing this why couldn't I just pop out the little cakes of watercolor from this like tray and pop them into half pans and when I sat down to record this video I had no idea if this would actually work I bought everything hoping it would work but I wasn't sure and luckily enough it worked really well the um, plastic tray it comes in is kind of like an ice cube tray you can pop it out from the back really easily and the cakes actually fit in my half pans that I got like from China from Taobao <laughs> forever ago uh, really well there was only three that were kind of sticky they were hard to get in because they just the, the pans just seemed they, I mean the paint just seemed a little bit bigger than the pan so I had to kind of really shove it in there um, and the three colors that I had difficulty were the French Vermilion, the Sap Green, and the Payne's Gray. The French Vermilion was probably the worst. I, I really had to shove as hard as I could and I still suspect there might be a little bit of pocket of air inside the half pan traps because there's quite a lot of paint um, popping up over the half pan if you know what I mean. But it is in there so it's good. Um, but when I push that in there, even though these are dried cakes, they are still kind of tacky, like really easily. I guess it's something to do with the formula that Snelly uses. Um, so I tried to use a tissue when I got stuck with the sap green one <laughs> to try to save my fingers from all the, the paint getting stuck on there. But that was a huge mistake. Do not do that <laughs> because all I did was get some tissue fibers stuck in the paint. So I had to use like a water brush to try to clean it off, but it still it still has a little bit of tissue fiber in there. But oh well, it, it works fine, so it's all good. The paint gray was the easiest, but it was still like a, a lot of pushing to get it in there. But at least those three are really stuck in very well. Some of the other colors was quite loose. It popped in super easy, but I feel like it could pop back out really easily too. So yeah, otherwise it worked really well. I was super happy that that had worked out so well and I discarded the ice cube tray thing because I wouldn't really be using that. It also came with a itty bitty little brush, but I didn't even attempt to use it because it's just so small. It's just not something I would be comfortable trying to actually use. So the second issue that I saw a lot of people complaining about and I would 100% agree is that the color range that comes with the aqua mini set isn't the best for me i really enjoy a split primary set so i added four half pans uh that i bought individually to the set to kind of round it out and i'm really happy with how that turned out the colors that i added were lemon yellow indian yellow carmine which is pv19 carmine and a phalo blue to give me a nice true cool blue um, the carmine would be for the cool red because the vermilion works really well for a warm red and then I had to add the the lemon yellow for my cool yellow and the Indian yellow for my warm yellow because the yellow that they gave was more of a true uh, yellow which is a primary yellow but I was super excited to try their carmine pv19 because I am a huge fan of the Schmika pv19 carmine and it could just be because it's just what I started out with and I got used to but I really love that color so I get kind of excited when other brands have the same pv19 carmine color and this one was really nice I liked it but I do think I like the Schmika a little bit better 
The one downside to adding these four half pants into the set was definitely the price. I was actually super shocked at the price of these individual half pants. I expected them to be kind of cheaper than the tubes because the tubes just have so much more paint in them, but it was almost the exact same price as a 10 milliliter tube of paint. You could get the half pan instead. I don't know if that's industry standard, but it was surprising to me and it did make checking out a little hard. I hesitated quite a lot. I felt heart pain like seeing the price go up by so much, but overall it works out because I feel like the average price between all of the half pans kind of evens out and it's still okay. Okay. But yeah, I was really, really surprised at how expensive they are. So the next step in setting up my palette is I just use my label maker and I print out a little kind of coded thing for me to understand what each of the colors are just so I keep everything organized. I do that with all of my watercolors. So I thought I'd just show the process of doing just one so you kind of get the idea without having to go through every single half pan, which can get really kind of dull. So the next step I like to do when setting up a new watercolor palette is to create a swatch card. I just take watercolor paper. You can use whatever type of watercolor paper you like to use. Some people suggest that you use watercolor paper that you use the most often because then the color will be represented more true to what you would see on your own paper. But I tend to use the cheapest stuff that I have just because it's cheaper and if I mess up the card, it's easier to just scrap it and create a new one. Um, but it's totally up to your own preference. Uh, the next thing I do is I just kind of freehand exactly how big it should be, cut it out, and make sure it fits in the lid before I move on to the next step. I feel like this footage might be a little bit boring for some people. I wasn't sure if I should leave it in, but I also feel like I don't really see many people show this step. So I thought it could be useful in case anybody would like to see how I do it. So I decided to just leave it in and hopefully it's useful for anybody um, out there. I don't know. <laughs> So once I've created the card, I just kind of measure it out and try to divvy it up by how many slots I need and create a grid so that when I do the swatches, it is a little bit more perfect. I used to just freehand it, but um, yeah, I've been really enjoying using a little bit of a grid just because at the end, I feel like everything looks a little bit more in line and it's a little bit more perfect and finished looking. It's kind of fun, even though I kind of super hate the process of drawing out the grid itself, but the end part is fun. I like to create a little bit of a border on the edges just so I can write in the brand of watercolor um, if I want to and any other information I need. And it's a really good thing that when I created this one, I did leave a border because I forgot I have one other Sennelli color in my main palette, which is the Elizabeth Chrism that I bought in a tube. <laughs> so um, I was thinking like, why leave it in the main palette when I could just pop it into here and then all of the colors are together. So that's what I ended up doing after the video was finished um, off camera and I still had a little bit of a sliver so I was able to use this swatch card without having to create another one. So it was really lucky that I had thought of that beforehand. So here I'm starting to swatch the colors and honestly this is my favorite part. It's so much fun to swatch the colors. I don't know why. Sometimes when I have a really bad art block I will just swatch watercolors because it just makes me feel kind of happy. I don't know. But immediately I noticed a pretty big problem. The pans just weren't working out so well. They were dancing around inside the tin like crazy. I couldn't really get a grip on the actual paint with the paintbrush and it was a little bit of a disaster. And then the cake of the paint started to pop out fully. Um, and that was annoying, especially since that was one of the ones that I bought professionally made half pan. Um, and it yet yeah, it was like popping out really easily. In fact, that looks like it's one of the ones that like is not seated so well in its pan and it's not one of the ones that I popped into a pan myself. So I thought that was funny. But I knew this is something that I definitely had to do something about to make the palette a bit more usable. So I went ahead and got myself um, blue tack and also magnets, like sticky magnets that you can put on the back of the pans so that they would stick inside the palette easier. I wasn't sure which one to use at first, but I decided to go for the magnets instead of the blue tack because I haven't really worked with blue tack before. I wasn't sure if it's like a permanent thing or something that can be pulled out. So I went with the magnets just so I could definitely have the 
flexibility of being able to move the pans around if I need it so I could transfer them to other palettes if I need it as well. That's kind of why I like using half pans over using like a plastic palette. The plastic palettes are really nice and they're really inexpensive but what I like about using half pans is this the flexibility. I can change around the organization of my palettes at any time, pop them into a smaller palette, move them into a bigger palette, move them into palettes based on the brand that I, they are in or based on color range. Like it just feels so much more flexible for me. So that's why I've been enjoying using half pans in general. So I wanted to keep that flexibility there. So that's why I used magnets. And you'll see that in the next clip. It worked out really, really well. I felt really happy with the result because they actually did stay in place a lot better. And because the pan was in place, the um, actual cake inside the half pan didn't dance around as much either. So it fixed the problem and it was just a lot easier to paint with. I've actually painted with these paints for a couple months since I recorded this video. And I've really been enjoying this set. I really love the colors and I love the the way this paint works i'm really glad that i gave it another shot and i'm really glad that i went for this palette after all and i'm really happy that it turned out the way i was hoping it would so yeah here is the magnet that i was talking about it comes in like a roll and you just cut it to the size you need so the only downside of that is i had to remove the label from the bottom of the half pan and put it on the side but luckily the paper from my label maker is like really nice so is able to pop off and put on the side no problem I just had to trim it a little bit and although I use quite a bit of magnet in that shot you can actually go like even a quarter of that and it'll still hold it really well and as you can see it does hold those pans in really really nicely they don't go anywhere and it's just so much easier to paint with that way so so yeah that is the aqua mini set I'm really happy that I went for it and I was able to modify this set the way that I was hoping I could I'm really happy with the colors I picked and there's just something about this set that just kind of in general makes me happy especially the cute little window I take the swatch card I flip it upside down and then I close the window so you can see the colors through it and something about that just makes me so happy every time I grab it and and use this palette. It's just, it's such a nice palette. I'm really glad I went for it. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I hope it was helpful for anybody looking for this palette. And if not, I hope it was interesting or fun to watch. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.